Hello, and welcome to a very uh, special episode of Tea Time. We are back to talk about Queen Charlotte. Um, I am your your host, Learn, joined by Jordan. This We're very excited to talk about this show. Was it literally so just good. came out. Yeah, and it's so good. I had to force myself to not watch it in one day. I base I watched one episode and then I was like, shit, I have work tomorrow, but I work from home and I finished it the next day. Yeah, yeah. I like made myself split it up over the weekend. Oh, it was so good. Are you ready to dive in? Yeah, I just I just ah, oh, I miss this. I miss the Bridgerton universe and like I knew I was already in, but now I'm like in in. Like if you tell me, oh, they're doing another Bridgerton spinoff, I'm there day one. Okay, so we will definitely talk about that as we get further in, because I have theories. <laughs> Good. Um, because I'm me. I'm pulling out my little notes on my phone. Um, in case you don't know, and if you don't, I don't really know why you're here. Um, Queen Charlotte is, of course, the Bridgerton spinoff, uh, which is a kind of mix somewhere between like a prequel and a storyline in between season two and three um, with our lovely ladies of the ton. Um, if you've never watched Sheet Time before, it's me and J- Jordan's recap podcast. I forced Jordan to watch the entire first season of Bridgerton uh, about a year ago now, and we reacted to all of that right before the second season came out. We have both watched the second season, but we'll uh, be holding off on that recap until before season three comes out. But in the meantime, we're going to talk about the queen. My sweet babies. The, the only British queen I recognize. Really. Um, okay, d- starting just, like, right from the top, um, the fact that they opened this episode being like, this is fucking fiction, don't come at us about how historically fucking accurate it is, or, like, whatever. We made it up. <laughs> like. That annoyed me. I, I want people out there to think this is all true. <laughs> Well, no, okay, so I I thought that until we got into the show, and then I was like, oh, you were afraid that white people were going to watch this and think that Queen Charlotte was black and that she married a white king and solved racism in England, yes, aren't right. you? That's your concern, isn't it? It's not, you know, any of the other things, it's that... It, uh, yeah, especially with, like, how much that is a storyline here, because in Bridgerton, and we, and we talked about this in Tea Time, it's like... Um, race blind casting and then like little lines are thrown in kind of being like yeah no we we kind of fix racism here in the 1800s this is a different there's a very different timeline than what you know mm-hmm. and this was kind of like hey let's let's explain that a little more yeah um i still when george was like with one dance we took a bigger step forward than britain has made in 500 years i was like that's a white man talking <laughs> it is but it's also like it's not wrong yeah, it's not wrong, but it's also like if you say that and are like, we've done everything we can. You know, like it's just, that's where it's like, oh no, buddy. What else you want me to do? I married one of them, Dash King George the Third. Oh my God. <laughs> he um, said it, not so me. Yeah. So, um, yes, the show is only six episodes long. Um, again, Jordan and I kind of binged this, so they all kind of melded together into uh, one in my brain. Um, I also didn't take notes, apparently, for, like, a good chunk of the first episode because I was so excited um, to watch something related to Bridgerton because I didn't start taking notes until we met Lady Danbury's husband. Yeah, I I, I didn't take any notes, not gonna lie to you. That's fine. Um, I need notes just to kind of, like, tell me how things are organized. Um, but yeah, so we basically start the show in, okay... The same way I explained this to Jordan when I was trying to talk to him about the show on the phone is the same way I will explain it to our listeners. Um, When I say present day, I mean like 1816. I mean when Bridgerton Bridgerton takes place. Yes. Um, When I say in the past or in the 1700s, I am referring to when the Queen is young, when when King George is young. But um, I will just say the present, and I don't mean 2023, I mean 1816. Um, Man, that bitch lived a long time. <laughs> dude. Dude. Oh, God. I just Googled Queen Charlotte, and a bunch of stuff were like, Queen Charlotte, the bleaker spinoff of Bridgerton. How dare they? It is kind of, it's dark. It's I sad. It's bleaker, I mean, a lot of people, yeah. yeah, a lot of people were tweeting being like, this is... 
that's okay. Neither do I. Um, a bunch of people were like, this is sad. Which, like, I f- Okay, so before we dive into the show, I feel like we had the things we already knew were going to happen because we know the queen as she currently is. Like, there's no... Now that there's really a question in season one and two, if Daphne or Simon are going to get together or if Kate and Anthony are going to get together, but they do a really, really great job at building up to like where there's some part of your brain that's like, but what if they don't? But what if, but what if? And Anthony got real close. (laughs) Anthony got got much further down the aisle than I thought he was going to. Me and you both, I don't want to talk about though, because I am eventually when we do the season two recap, that is going to be peak Jordan and Liam content. Yes. Um, but with this, we've met King George. We know he goes insane or has Alzheimer's, something where he is not in the present moment and is prone to violent outbursts. Um, and that it is very sad for Charlotte that, um, this has happened. And they were in love. So we knew, even though, like, this is going to be the love story of George and Charlotte, we knew where it was heading. Yeah. But by God. I was worried that a plot point, because I didn't know how much of their marriage it was going to cover. Like, I didn't know if it was going to, like, give us the whole story between then and now. Again, Mm -hmm. now being the Bridgerton present day. (laughs) Um, And so I was really worried that a plot point was going to be the daughter they lost that he mentions in one of his hallucinations. Same, dude. I was I don't remember which season that happens in. Season one. Okay. That's in season one. I thought that was going to be like a major plot point this episode, or this this season would be the death of, I think it was Emily? I think so. Uh, I was very concerned that we were going to see... um, because that is real. That is one of the things that is real. Charlotte and um, George did have a daughter that passed away that was George's favorite. Um, and kind of like his favorite child. Like, period. Full stop. Not his favorite daughter. Just his favorite child. Um, Old people and get they, to a point where they're like, no, I have a favorite. And it it did cause him to have like a pretty severe... Uh, mental break after she passed the stress of it so i was very afraid that we were going to see charlotte lose a child and not be allowed to deal with it because of what because how much it breaks her husband yeah because i was also concerned that because we don't know how old they were when they lost that kid in the bridgerton canon i was concerned that they were going to use that to try and like force a connection between um augustus george's mom and Charlotte, which I did not want to see. I wanted Caitlin Stark to be a bitch, and a bitch she was. Um, but, like, in the best way. Yes, in like, the best way. She's the only one that is allowed to gaslight Gatekeep and Girl Boss. Just her. Gaslight her Gatekeep only. Girl Boss. Yeah. Um, and she truly, throughout the entire show, does gaslight, does Gatekeep, and does Girl Boss. <laughs> she does this is totally unconnected but i have to tell you this on content because i want it recorded have you seen the uh live laugh lesbian shirt from target no (laughs) they made a crop top for pride that is pink with white script that says live laugh lesbian and it is the funniest thing i've ever seen (sighs) oh oh man the democrat moms you're gonna have a field day with that one (laughs) Oh my god, I was like, there is a, I, and I love her, I'm not talking shit, but there is a, a, a woman in Ohio named uh, Carol who is going to buy that shirt because she's just so proud of her lesbian daughter, like, and I love Carol. Uh, I love um, this. anyway. <laughs> I just, I keep thinking about it. <laughs> Alright, anyway. Um... I don't know what in that sentence I was saying about Queen Charlotte brought my brain there, but here we are. Um, But yeah, so that's kind of our general thoughts. It was sad. It hurt our souls. We'll get to the final episode was Yeah, the final episode is where I want to talk about how sad it is for a a kind of unrelated reason, but like a smart choice they made. And just it's Mm going to sound like a nitpick. General thoughts. This reminded me why I love Bridgerton and why I'm like, oh, I'm in now. Because every major plot point, not even B plots or C plots, the main plot allows me to bring out my inner, 
Ooh, girl! Like, every plot point allows me to do that at home, and I'm like... It's great. It's so... It's... Because, you know, it hits the same place that, like, reality TV hits without any of the... Oh, these are real people that are walking around ramifications of... Of, um... Like, everything that just went on with Vanderpump Rules. That's crazy to watch. However family real families were ruined <laughs> families were destroyed marriages were broken trust was lost there is, in bridgerton, there is one kid going to two christmases this year yeah with bridgerton there's none of that <laughs> no um anyway uh so yeah we jump right into the first oh the only other thing i'm going to say that jordan cannot relate to but anybody else out there i'm i actually would gather a lot of people that watch British and probably also watch Grey's Anatomy. I forgot how good Shonda Rhimes is of a writer. Because she's not written on Grey's in a really long time and I will die on this hill. Early Grey's is fantastic. We start to get a little wonky when Izzy cuts Denny's Elvad wire. From there on we get a little weird. But before that, great show. Um, it's 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 the medical drama family guy that once Seth MacFarlane left, it kind of lost it, it. It lost that, you know, that the sauce, the the je ne sais quoi, I think is the yeah. expression, right? Like, you know, Grey's Anatomy. Did you say je ne sais quoi? And if so, was it on purpose? Is it quoi or quoi? I forgot. Quoi. Je okay. ne sais quoi. I'm not French, bro. Um. Anyway, the first episode written by Shonda Rhimes called Queen to Be, and we start in 1761 with Charlotte and her brother Adolphus um, in a carriage on their way to meet King George. We see that Adolphus has signed Charlotte away in marriage to the Crown of England. Um, Charlotte's not really, like, down for it. We get a great fucking line where... um. <laughs> he's like i gave you too much freedom after our parents died you read too much and now you're headstrong which is just like damn yeah that's how i feel about you sometimes hey my <laughs> parents are still alive jordan you can't say th things like that because we know for a fact that there are some people out there who legitimately thought we were orphans because our streaming thing is called orphan gamers that's fair so like that's fair we can't make jokes about our parents being dead um anyway <laughs> Um, so, yes, uh, Charlotte goes, we get a really amazing scene of her meeting, um, all these big wigs in Parliament, and Dowager Princess Augusta, uh, otherwise known as Caitlin Stark, George's mother, um, who makes her turn and show off her teeth and, like, touches her hips and tells her that they're, they're big enough to have good kids, and then does something incre- one of many incredibly racist things she does- and tries to um, clean the mole off of Queen Charlotte's cheek. Mm hmm Which, like, goddamn. Um, really, really hammering home that we used to treat women like cattle thing. Yup, and we get into the same thing where they have a whole conversation later about how, like, Queen Charlotte is much blacker than Augusta thought she was going to be. And they're like, well, we did tell you that she had more blood. Which brought me to... A terrible, terrible thing. Jordan, have you ever heard the term more? I know what it is to be more blood. Are they referring M -O -O -R. to... Or they're referring to the, Moor, the Moors who took over Spain. They were... Uh, yes. Yeah, from the Middle it's East. It's an old, old yeah. term for something not white that the European use, yeah. mostly meaning black. Now, it's a big thing in Othello because Othello is a more man. M not a is, Mormon, but has a... more blood. Yes, he has more blood. Um, I had to read Othello in high school, and the only thing I had as context for what more meant, since that's not a thing we use anymore, like because why would we? Excess. Was Scottish Moors, oh. which are just like really dry fields that have like heather. And every couple of, like, miles have a big bog that, like, you can put a body in and it will stay completely preserved for, like, the rest of time because there's no oxygen at the bottom of the bog. That was my context for what a moor was. So when I read Othello, I was, like, freaking out that he's Scottish. I don't get it. And my teacher had to be, like, Lear, no. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um... But yeah, so uh, the Princess Augusta does not love that Queen Charlotte is... Um, 
as black as she is, which is a wild thing to watch, uh, and tells all of the men of Parliament that she needs to expand the guest list for the wedding that is, like, that afternoon to include people from Queen Charlotte's side. Um, this is where we meet Lady Danbury uh, in her young form, listen, uh, Agatha you thought, Danbury. If you thought we thought she was a queen before, uh, bro. Um, so we see Lady Danbury having sex with a very, very old man who it's very, like, ag it's not aggressive in, like, a complimentary way. It's just, like, He's, he's I don't know. I don't know. Her. Yeah. It's very much just for his pleasure. She could be like a blow up doll and he wouldn't notice, is kind of where I'm going. Um. Oh, God. And that was my very first note was Lady Danbury deserved better. She does. Um. Because she did. And then he took his dentures out and that really freaked me out. Ooh, that made me uncomfortable. <laughs> um. So, yes, we start to find out that the people uh, from her side that they're referring to are wealthy um, black members of the English society that are rich enough that they should be part of the ton and should have titles, but because they're black, they don't. Um, so we go to, they all go to the wedding. They kind of split the church up side by side, um, and all of the all the white people are real uncomfortable. Um, this is also where I was reminded that it was the 17 fucking hundreds, because the fashion- I'm not saying that the fashion in the 1800s was, like, in 1816 was stupendous, but it's better than breeches and white stockings and little pilgrim buckle shoes on the men. It's mostly the men that I have issue with. Yeah. It's men's fashion. I can't- I, for some reason, cannot take a man in stockings and knee breeches. Seriously. <laughs> That's fair. I just can't. Like, it's just such a ridiculous look to me. <laughs> um, and uh, everybody's, you know, getting ready for the wedding. Princess Augusta is going up and down saying to uh, various members of Charlotte's side that um, they now have titles for whatever stupid reason that she comes up with in the moment. Um... Lord Danbury is all excited. Lady Danbury is all excited. We get name drops of a couple different things. We get um, the Hast or the Bassets, which are the Duke of Hastings. So that is um, Simon's father's family. And the other big one that we hear that got me all excited, and then I had to remind myself that it was like the 1700s, is uh, we hear the mention of, I always mess up the order, I think it's Smythe Smith family. Yes, that's the order. Yes. Which, if you are a fan of the books, there is a um, spin-off series that takes place kind of during Bridgerton. I think in the first one, Daphne is definitely already married, and I think Anthony already is, because I vaguely remember them talking about Benedict being, like, the next eligible Bridgerton, but he nobody's going to him because he doesn't have a title. So, like, there's a whole thing. <laughs> Um, I like how this feels like one of our Media Club or Marvel School for Dummies episodes where it's like, well, if you know the real lore. Yeah. <laughs> ten Easter um, eggs, you might have missed it, Queen Charlotte. <laughs> and I love the Smythe Smith Quartet is what it's called. Um, the first book's boring as hell. The girl's name is Honora, and like her name, she's strange, and I didn't really grow attached to her and did not grow attached to her love interest her hero in that book um but the other ones are great and some of his kisses which is the third one is probably my favorite julia quinn book i love that book anyway um fingers crossed we get that as an adaptation yeah so i'm really hoping we get a Smythe smith adaptation which i feel like bridgerton is such a big money maker for netflix that like we're definitely gonna get that i imagine we're gonna go to a roth bees series roth rock the bees whatever the fuck their name is um rock the bees it's i don't know it's british and annoying rock the bees it, rock it the takes bees. place at the same time as or no later than queen charlotte because violet's out in most of them gotcha uh but anyways so i'm very excited and i hope we we get more um and then we find out that the queen the bride has run off 
No one's really sure where she is. Um, and we see that she is in the garden trying to climb a tree and go over the garden wall. Uh, she is found by uh, Prince George. The reason she keeps trying to go over the garden wall is nobody will answer her questions about what the prince is like. Um, Which fair. Yeah, I mean, it, because then, it, it, like, when she's going on that rant of, like, is he slow? Like, I can fix that. And, like, all that kind of stuff. I'm like, I get it. If nobody is saying anything, I'm going to imagine the worst. Yeah. Um, and, sorry, hang on. And her and George have the cutest, the cutest little moment where he tells her all this stuff that about himself, and he's like, I'm just George, and it's so cute. Uh, and he asks her if she wants to get married, and basically, like, says, in theory, I will help you go if you don't, if you say no. Even when her brother is like, of course she does. And he's like, no, no, she's still deciding. Um, and made me fall in love with him. Uh, and now I'm sad. Like, I just, I watched that scene. I was like, I know it doesn't have a happy ending. Like, I'm already getting um, upset. Yeah. And in modern times, in present day, we get lovely Lady Whistledown being like, hey, the princess has died. Now, first, I need to apologize to Jordan because I thought the princess who died was the crying guy's wife. Turns out, no, it was, in fact, his daughter. It was the queen's granddaughter, and the baby that died was the great-grandson. Okay. Yes, you so were they correct. they had, like, three levels of, of uh, heirs ready to go. Yes, they had the so Prinny, who was acting as King Regent, who is the one crying, that's mm. Prinny, he... His real name is George. People called him Prinny. I don't really know why. Um, I just know it was derogatory. People didn't like him. Um, Prinny was married and he had a daughter. That daughter was married and she was pregnant. And that's who died. And none of the rest of them have legitimate children. So now they're, they went from having like two backups to none. Yeah, essentially. Um... Basically, she knows the crown will stay in their family for one more generation after George, but there's no guarantee after that. Um, How would it stay after George if his daughter's dead? So, so there's George, that's that's Charlotte's <gasps> oh, husband, oh, that his George. son, Prinny. Yeah, okay, George, you, they you... called him Prinny. Gotcha. He will, does become king when his father dies. And then after him is when we start having queens. Progressive. Almost exclusively. Well, fully exclusively. Until now. They had a good run. I don't know. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just realizing now that for the rest of our lives, there will never be a, a queen of England as the main ruling mon monarch. Because William is next, and William has a son. Mm. Wow. Yeah. She, she had a generation, and now a generation will only ever have kings. Yeah. They'll have multiple, at least. Yeah. Like, Charles they get a George as long as his mom. No, they have a William, uh, they have Charles, a William, and then George. Yeah. Ironically. Because those are the only names you're allowed to name. <laughs> yeah, they, they have, like, four options. It's like Andrew, George, William, Henry, and then they call them now Harry, because Henry is Prince Harry's real name. I don't know why Harry is a nickname. Okay, here's my thing. Harry is sometimes a nickname for Henry, and then in other cases, Harry is just a name, and I don't enjoy that. No, names bother me when shit like that. Um, but yeah, so uh, in the future, we see she finds out that Prince Charlotte of Wales... Um, has passed. Princess Charlotte of Wales has passed in childbirth. Um, we get a great scene where the queen is just laying into her children. I loved this scene. Her yelling at her sons to settle down and making dirty jokes and them being like, mom, there's ladies around. And she looks at her daughters and goes, who? Because it's like when I call my sisters bitches uh, and people are like, hey, 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 you can't call girls that. Like, that's not a girl. That's my sister. Like, it's Good that Lord. thing with family where, like, you could kind of say yeah. whatever you want. And so she's like, I'm not going to hold my tongue in front of my daughters. And I assume that it's because, what, they all got to the age where, like, hey, I know you're not married, but you're allowed to learn about sex now. 
she's also like she's a queen and she has a goal for them yeah and they probably got a better education yeah and just like she, she you know i if you want an heir we have no heir and your father's getting up there in years like I can no longer handle you with kid gloves. I must, you know... I must say... Pressure you. Virgins to the left of me, whores to my right. A like, line that doesn't need to go so fucking hard, but it does. What's also funny is that... It fits perfectly in Stuck in the Middle with You. The song Stuck in the Middle with You. I don't know which song is that. Oh, God, I forgot. You don't know any music that was not popular before like 2000 <laughs> i can't reference popular 80s songs and you know them like you could mention like the real 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 popular ones that... you didn't know what material girl was i've never gone that out of my... like one of the biggest songs i've out never of the gone 80s. out of my way to listen to madonna i've listened to who has who our age has gone out of their way to listen to madonna like um anyway uh, yeah, so, uh, Charlotte and George, they get married, he's like, I got a surprise for you, we get a, um, strings version of Halo by Alicia Keys. No, Beyonce. Oh. Okay, yeah. I don't know Beyonce super well. I know I just, like, shit on you for not knowing who Madonna is, I truly have listened to, like, four Beyonce that's, songs in my entire life. <laughs> that's why in our Discord, the voice chat that says playing Halo has in parentheses by Beyonce. Oh yeah, and I knew that too. Mm -hmm. I feel like, okay, the, the real issue is Discord. it was used... Do you remember the Teen Nick Halo Awards <laughs> yes. from when Nick can? So that like created a weird thing in my brain where I was like, oh, he chose that song because it's his wife. Which at one point Nick Cannon, Cannon, Nick Cannon did date Alicia Keys, I think. I don't think they were married. No, they were never married, but, like, it got very confused in my brain, where I was like, oh, he's using this song because, like, so I always am like, it's Alicia Keys, but it's... It's not. It also blends because it was used by every dance studio on the planet for their modern piece the year that came out. Um, it's stuck in my brain with... New York, Jay-Z, and Alicia Keys? Yes, it is. Yeah, those were big songs when we were younger for dance studios, at least in our area, to use. And so I heard those songs so much that they are one in my brain. <laughs> Fair. Um, anyway, uh, he brings her to Buckingham House. He's like, this is where you're going to live. All right, this is Brimsley. He's your guy. I'm a go. And she's like, what do you mean, me? Yeah, he and he doesn't answer. He just keeps saying yours. And it really, like, was really pissing me off. Yeah. And then we get into the other reason that George frustrates me as a human. Which is, your wife is hot as fuck. You are a king you and a man in 17-something-something. Something. Who gives a shit if you think you're crazy or if your mom was like, you can't get close to her because you can't share the secrets of the crown. Like, you can... Because then when she's like, our wedding night, he gets all huffy and like storms off to the bedroom and it's like bitch what are you doing yeah like she's hot as shit and like did you not know like i'm so confused by george being like i married her and not understanding why everybody's like okay but you need to take that next step it's like do you not know how it like works? you've definitely had sex before like what is happening it was just like really pissing me off no same because it's like i don't know imagine giving someone I don't know if that's a good comparison to make. Never mind. <laughs> okay. And then he, like, fucks off to Q. And, like, it's like, I'm gonna be there. No explanation. Screams at her. And then gets all pissy when she's mean to him. And it just... Oh, this scene made me mad. George makes me mad sometimes. His outburst of, I am your king. This, it came off like when an older sibling sometimes needs to play that card and the younger sibling isn't listening. They're like, hey, hey, you have to listen to me. I, a mom put me in charge. Because he's just been told all life, his whole life, like, hey, you know, you could do this. Like, you're the king. So he, he's, he's doing the same thing. He's like, I'm, I'm the king. He's but like, he, a he never does it when it matters. No. Is my problem. Um, so then we jump into the second episode, which is Honeymoon Bliss. Um, 
Charlotte is just alone on her honeymoon, eating alone, being watched by like a bajillion servants. Poor thing. Still having to change into the three different outfits a day that women had to wear, yeah. even though she's alone. I thought that was supposed to be a montage of like day after day. No, that was one fucking day. Mm -hmm. So you got up, you put on your morning dress, which is uh, what you wore to breakfast. And then eventually you would change into your day gown. That's what you would wear throughout the day. Um, if you plan to go walking, it was slightly different. If you plan to go horseback riding, you had to change into a completely different outfit. You had to change into a riding outfit. And then at like 6 p.m., you had to change into your evening wear. Even if you were just eating dinner with your family, you have to change into an evening gown and get done up in evening wear. Well, yeah, you wouldn't and want to be a whore, would you? <laughs> and it's infuriating because for men, it's like, I put on these pants and I change my jacket every couple of hours. Like, fuck y'all. Like, what the fuck? Why do I have to get changed this much? <laughs> and also, I'm alone. Who gives a fuck? I am the queen. Who gives a shit if I eat dinner in my morning dress? Like, I mean, she's the queen. What if she was like, hey, I want to go all natural. I want to be in my birthday suit. You try to stop me. I'm the queen. I was going to say they do go all natural because, like, underwear didn't really exist for women back then. That is but true. With the, with the amount of layers you're wearing, there's basically underwear on. Nope, there's nothing covering the badge. There is nothing covering. There is no, like... Easy access. What will the white men think of next? Good job, guys. And, like, well, because this is the other thing that's hilarious to me is that when they did... When they did introduce, like, uh, pantaloons or, or bloomers, whatever you want to call them... Um, they originally introduced them where, so, because women had so many layers, they had a slit right in the middle that you would open to go to the bathroom. Which is just, like, wild to me. Because it's not you opening that to go to the bathroom, it's one of your lady's mates. And that just seems, like, I just, I hate it. <laughs> You're just, like, up there going, it was, it was either this or being a peasant. Yeah, and it's like, ah... I also, though, from the position of, like, being, like, a, a, a duchess, that's so many people's hands near, like, my bits, and I don't want that many people's hands down there. Yeah, it sounds like, I'm not even gonna say just women, it just sounds like most higher class people did not have, really, a lot of autonomy over the amount of people that saw them naked, because everybody no! was dressing you, bathing you. And they talk about it in this, where, like, up until, like, into the 1700s, it used to be a thing where if you were royalty, you were physically carried from your wedding reception to your bedroom, where then eight men would stand and watch you fuck to make sure that you did it. Wouldn't they also, like, I'm not saying that this is scientifically accurate to the body. I'm they would saying. check for blood on the yes. sheets, but I don't know which societies that were those were and for how long. I know the French were doing it. When Henry VIII was a ruler, because it happened to his sister, but if it could have been phased out after that, I have no fucking clue, and I don't know who. I get confused with who checked the sheets and who would do like. That was a bad movement to do exams. <laughs> who would do like exams? Like, like who, who would do the you. more uh, m medical ish? Type of yeah, because, like, who would just... Catherine the Great in Russia, it was, like, a medical exam when she was getting... Russia, Germany, wherever she was ruler. Um, it was, like, a medical exam, and they did it to Joan of Arc a bunch, but she kept claiming she was a virgin from God, so they were like, we gotta, we gotta check. I'm just imagining yeah. them up there with, like, one of those things you used to ex examine diamonds real close. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. Oh, maybe and that's it is why led the monocle to... came into, into society. <laughs> Ew. And it's led to so many people being confused about, like, what the hymen is and, like, what any of that means. <laughs> like, yeah. We are still reeling from something that was said in 1776 or some crap, like... I know um, we push a lot for, like, American sex ed to be like, hey, teach about the clitoris. They teach about the hymen, but in the right way, too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Lady Danbury is now one of the Queen's women. Uh, Brimsley is basically like, hey, you're lonely. I'll sneak Lady Danbury over here. Brimsley, a real one. The man. The man. I just love that the when they're, when they're first getting introduced to each other, and she's like, 
trying to walk at different speeds and he's like i'm on to you i've i he's on it and he's like i'm always gonna be five paces away no more than five paces and then they finish talking and he goes one two three four five and stops i what i also love is like i was watching him i was like he's gonna keep up with you because he's young and spry you can't outrun this brimsley (laughs) and he's also just wearing like regular clothes you're wearing probably 50 pounds 50 pounds of fabric fabric. and a corset and like Like, did the because the dresses used to expand like that i'm assuming that was kind of like a frame inside the dress it's like a cage cage yeah Yeah, like a bird cage um but uh we also at some point in here are introduced to the fact Oh, no. So, they have... Lady Danbury comes over. They have a whole little, like, fucking to-do where Lady... And then Lady Danbury goes to see the queen, and the queen's like, hey, has my son fucked Charlotte yet? At which point I was like, imagine having to be this fucking involved in your... In your son's sex life. Yeah. And it's like... Like... She's... It it doesn't... At no point in the show does it come off as, like, she's into this. She's, like, begrudgingly, like... Did he, did he bang? Yeah. Like, it's it's fully for, for like, England and the continuation of it's his tru- line. Like, it's, it's very the, clinical. It's truly for the purposes of nat- of national security. Like, if you're ever, a, like, yeah. a, uh, if you were ever, like, cornered by your parents who thought maybe you were having sex and they were like, hey, we want to make sure you're safe. And you're like, this is awkward. Now, imagine if that was, like, you know, Joey B and Dr. Jill, like, having to ask you that. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Lady Danbury, fucking Augusta is like, I'm gonna try and turn Lady Danbury. I was like, Lady Danbury is not gonna fucking fall for this. They're each playing 4D chess, and I'm here for it. Truly, just chess masters. Um, so, yeah, Lady Danbury basically being like, hey, I'll report it back to you about whether or not they fucked, but, like, my husband's gotta get into whites. Like, it's great. Um... We also get a really, like, I love the scene where they're they're talking about it and they send everybody out of the room and Agatha's just like, Brimsley, we need paper and charcoal. And it's just, she just drew, like, every possible sex position. And, like, they're not terrible drawings. No. Um, but you have to remember, that's, like, what ladies did. It was, like, art. We weren't allowed to, like, read. Yeah. So we learned how to draw. And then eventually, like, uh, when you get to a certain age, drawings for whores, and then you gotta switch to watercolors. Oh, that's interesting. Um, so, you know, Charlotte basically is like, fuck you, goes over, sees George staring at Venus. Just... And he's just in his little nerd cave. It would be like if you were like, oh, my man's cheating on me, and you came over, and he was just at a computer with a loud keyboard and three monitors. Like... <laughs> Yeah, like truly just like does not. And and I loved her line of, I thought you were at a brothel. And he goes, do you know what a brothel is? And she goes, kind of, sort of. Enough to know I don't I, really I, want you Enough there. to know I, I'm not supposed to be happy when you go to one. And so then um, they go in to consummate their marriage. And Brim, this is where we find out that Brimsley and Reynolds, the king's man, they fucking and I loved them. I loved that sweet, so- sweet couple. I didn't know, like, they had the few exchange of lines of, like, oh, I'm for the queen, I'm for the king, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what they're actually saying, but, like, they're each trying to defend their side. And you would ask me earlier, like, have you gotten to the part where Brimsley fucks yet? And I was like, no. And I'm thinking, to my own, you know, this is my own flaw, I'm assuming Brimsley's straight. Shouldn't have. Never assume. But the second he stood on the stair next to Reynolds and the and the camera like sh- shifts a little bit, I was like, oh, they're gay for each other. Yeah, they super they super gay for each other. We see Reynolds go down on Brimsley. Oh, that's lot. the other thing. I was like, okay, now I wonder, like, is this attention or like have they known? And they get into the room, and boy, did they know. Yeah, yeah. Um. Oh, I love them. They're so cute. Um, George's got a pasty ass. And I always forget what Bridgerton sex scenes are like until they happen. And then I'm like, oh, yeah. It's a lot of man butt. We're like, a lot of man butt and a lot of fear that this is going to be where they're just going to do it and f- go full Game of Thrones and you're going to see a dick. And like... I mean, they get closer to that uh, than like... We don't really see boobs too much of like the main characters. No! Yeah, I was surprised. Which like... We usually see titty. Usually, but you know, respectfully, I'm not worthy to see Lady Danbury's nipples. I'm oh, not. When they when they held up the towel in front of her boobs when she was getting out of the tub, I was like, "Aw, 
they feel like Jordan. Yeah. Um, no, we uh, speaking of Lady Danbury though, she's so nice to her husband when she doesn't have to be, she and is. I love her. And something I like about this specific show that I'm not saying Bridgerton didn't do, but I didn't see it like as emphasized is that nobody's a clear like asshole for the purpose of being asshole ish. Like everybody Mm -hmm. has their own motivations and there are things that are above them. And he very much is like, and I don't know why I should have to make this clear, but I will. I am grading on the standards of 300 plus years ago. Yes. It's as a student of history. It's one of those things you kind of have to get over that. The past was fucked up in a lot of ways, really fast. Yeah. He's not a bad person. He doesn't abuse her. He doesn't talk down to her. Of course, like he, he he goes, you're a woman. Clearly, you're below me. But he is never like some of the other men we've seen. He doesn't beat her. And he's not like the villains you get. Even in later seasons of fucking, ooh, um, Hyacinth's husband's father is a piece of work. Yeah. Like, the shit he does is Fucked up. George and Hyacinth both marry people that their fathers are insane. Great. We get two who married people with no dads, and then we get two who married people with shitty dads. Yeah, I think the only one who had a good father. We don't know a lot about Philip's father. And Sophie's father. Father, Benedict's wife's father is good in the way a man could be good back then. And I will leave it at that for now. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I liked that Lord Danbury wasn't shown to be like super fucked up or anything. Because it just, it's again, it's, it's the way things were. And at no point is he overly... A- mean to her and so and she's extra kind to him and there's like a level of sweetness there that's it sounds so morbid but it's there is. it's kind of like watching a a granddaughter deal with her very old grandfather that gets or a daughter st- deal with her very old father just with sex <laughs> yes which makes it uncomfortable and weird but it's a weird comparison um, but i get what you're saying yeah uh so, yeah, I just really like the way that relationship is painted. And I like that she's not like, I'm going to step out on my husband with, like, fucking Smith Smythe over here or whoever, even though they probably would sleep with her. And she's not like, I'm trying, I'm actively trying to speed up him leaving this earth. Yeah. Like. And she also uh, understands that, even if she's not in love with him, that the the race aspect of this whole country applies to both of them and that they're they they have to deal with that together it also puts her feelings towards simon's father and simon's father as a whole into a new perspective yeah um because in the books where they're not specifically uh people of color simon's dad being so weird about simon like having a son and carrying on the hastings line and all that shit It's, like, fine. It makes sense. But, like, it makes more sense in this context. And then showing us how the Bassets got that title makes it even clearer. Um, which I appreciated that. Uh, okay, the coronation scene. Fine, great, whatever. Could not take it seriously when it got to the end of the coronation and everyone in the royal family who is slightly related to the royal family reaches under their seats and they all pull out little crowns and they all put on little crowns at the same time. It was so weird. It took me out of the moment. (laughs) Okay. I couldn't take it seriously because I had like earlier that weekend seen the photo of King Charles with the with the big crown and the two little things in his hands. And I was just like... His two little scepters. I was yeah. like, see, it's cute when you go like, ah, oh, look how dumb they were 400 years ago. You do it now and it's like, no. Yeah. You know how many people you can feed? Yeah. Um, shortly after this, we get, you know, that um, he wants to come back and like he shows up at dinner. He gives her a dog in here too. Shows up at dinner, which is the scene made me mad because I'm like, you didn't warn her at all that you were coming. You didn't ask to see her or something. You just were like, surprise. Yeah. Um, 
And then they start screaming at each other and they start fucking. And what I love about this scene is when they start making out, Brimsley and Reynolds look at each other like, are they going to leave the room or do we have to make everyone else leave the room? See, I feel like they, they went from, are they going to leave the room? They're not leaving the room. And then they're looking at each other like, are we allowed to tell? Did we make noise? Like, what do we do in this situation? No, but I also feel like there was a small part of them that went, we weren't excused. <laughs> yeah, like they're having this debate over, I have not been excused, so I'm not supposed to leave, but I also don't think I'm supposed to watch this, and I'm afraid that one of them is going to look up during the act and look at me and realize or, we're all still or here. the other servants, yeah. And so eventually they're just like, you know what, I'm taking an executive decision. They just decision. start hurting everyone out. They get everyone out, they shut the doors, there is a massive crash, and Reynolds and Brimsley just kind of look at each other like, that's Future Us's problem? And I don't want to know. They're kind of like, what could have fell? Like, what could all that crash? What are you <laughs> doing that you could have knocked over whatever made that noise? Um, Because in my brain, it's just George pushing like a whole ham on a tray off a table to put Charlotte there. And it's like, or I assume, the floor. I assume even though it's just the two of them, every single um, chair is set. And so he's just like, hey, half this table. Yeah. Gone. Um, Glass is a rarity, and I've just destroyed, like, $3 million worth by them, them standards. However, in this sex montage, I had a couple of moments where I was like, stop doing this. You are going to get such a fucking yeast infection. Because, like, his hands are touching food. When he's, his first little, like, I like working in the farms, like, Farmer George shit, where his hands are covered in dirt. And they start making out. It's like, do not let him put those dirty ass hands anywhere near your vagina. But did they have toilet paper then? They had water to wash your hands. Washing your hands after working in the fields was still yeah, a thing. I just feel like given, the, I don't know. I feel like back then. Toilet everybody... paper has nothing to do with yeast infections. I just think that the, to all the hygiene adds up to basically everyone's walking around with, like, chafed thighs and a yeast infection. Not necessarily a yeast infection. That's more stuff getting up in there. I would actually imagine there were less yeast infections back then because, like, a big thing that causes, ye causes yeast infections now is sitting in wet bathing suits and antibiotics. Ah. Um... I also love we get in here, um, we have met the sociopathic doctor that starts treating George. And that's a lot, and that's they're just cool. full-on torturing him. There is, Oh, yeah. God. I don't even know where to start with that one. Because, uh, the like, doctor's in, with the doctor's crazy, and one of the notes I wrote was, this man is absolutely Jack the Ripper. I feel like that sums up who this man was. Yeah. And, and watching then, it right after Guardians, I was like, this is a bad guy. Ah, that's fair. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, it was just like wild that it's like, okay, I know they, they knew nothing back then. And so of course their only assumption for this stuff is going to be cognitive, <laughs> like more cognitive therapy than, than uh, m medicines that could actually affect the, your oh, brain chemistry. No, no, no cognitive therapy, just torture. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm using the word cognitive here very loosely. Like, and I, the, th the thing that like was almost sad was that like, or no, was sad, not almost. Was George still being like, not only if this is what it takes, but like finding the farming as like kind of a way that did work and that being like just somehow roped into you being used against him? Yeah, it's all weird as shit. Um, I, the doctor really freaked me out. It, he's just a very weird dominatrix. <laughs> Like and and like why is like the fact that he's the one shaving him every morning to like do that thing of like I can hold a knife to your throat, which my issue with that though is like at any time George can turn around and be like I'm irritated like when he smacks the king in broad daylight in front of a bunch of guards. I was like, why the fuck would you, you have to be real fucking cocky to think the king's not going to turn around and be like, stab him. Well, that's that's basically what the king said. He goes, I'm giving you permission to treat me not like a king and treat me 
like yeah, but at any point that man can change his mind he could. and go to the guards and send whoever he wants to murder you and this doctor is willing to take the risk because i'm convinced he gets off on it like i'm like i don't know if it's the guy they cast or like what but for some reason it sits really strongly in my brain that this like turns this guy on that's why he does it like the idea of like breaking animals turns him on and it makes me very uncomfortable. The way he talks about that Pomeranian is creepy. <laughs> it might. Um, in uh, present day, we get a lot of stuff with Lady Danbury and Violet, where Violet is starting to have urges. This is all just Violet having a sexual awakening, and I was here We're for it. We're already there? Yeah. Oh, wow. Because one of my next notes is, I'm not going perfectly in order, because like, it's, it's not a recap, it's our reactions, but like I have a note where to go. Uh, fortunate is not the reaction people usually have to this story, Violet Bridgerton. <laughs> oh, so yeah, you're still at that meeting? It's the church where she sees yeah. Violet lighting the candle. See. We find out that Lady Danbury was there because she wants to open a school for orphans because her husband hated orphans, which is fucking hilarious. And that Violet's there to light a candle because it is Edmund's birthday and she misses her husband. She talks about how she used to make him birthday hats for his birthday because no one had ever really celebrated his birthday. She um, his birthday hat. Yeah. Uh, and then D Lady Danbury's like, yo, you're fortunate. And Violet truly just gets her this look at her face like, that is not the response this story and, usually and, receives. And, and, and the thing is, like, Violet is silent long enough that she's almost like, go on. Like, she wants the explanation. And continue. Lady Danbury, do Lady Danbury doesn't give it. Doesn't give it. She just kind of runs off. I just want to- We've also- Ooh, I, I want to shout out the first scene with Violet where the queen brings her in and goes, you've had two weddings in two years. What's like, how do you get your kids to get married? And she goes, well, you know, love helps. It helps if they're in love. And the queen goes, my sons are in love. They are in love with Catholics. They are in love with, love with actresses, actresses, married women. They're in love with commoners. They're in love with married women. And it broke. I also thought she was going to say they were in love with whores at some point. Like I thought she was just going to straight up say it, but. Well, I think commoners was, I think commoners and actresses, actresses kind of covered and, and that. Tour, yeah. I also just really like the look on, the woman who plays Violet is so funny, because the look on her face when, when the queen is like, hey, uh, what's your advice? You just see this, don't use my children as examples. The fact that either of them got down the aisle is Don't use either of them as a miracle. And more specifically, don't use Anthony as an example, but again, and it's we'll, we'll talk only... about season two another day. It's only going to get worse from here. <laughs> yeah. Um, the older boys and Eloise are something getting down the aisle. Like, oh, God. There are all these jokes in the later books about how Hyacinth and George and Francesca was all a little bit easier. And, like, whenever I read it, I'm like, yeah. And Anthony and Violet had to be like, God. Like, what the fuck? Um. I also like when she looks at, when Violet looks at Lady Danbury is like, you've also had a bunch of children. She's like, my four children, none of them live in England and I like it that way. Um, Agatha, back then, her husband dies, so now her title mid is up in the air. Mid, truly, right in the middle of Doggy, just. Do you know why I'm a bad person, though? Why? Is because my brain goes... You're just lucky he didn't fall forward yeah. <laughs> and crush you. Uh, um, we also meet young Violet. She's like 13, 14, somewhere in there. Yeah, I thought like 14-ish. Yeah. Uh, and her mother, who is a racist psycho, and her dad, who calls her beauty and brains, which is the cutest shit I've ever seen. Violet, adorable. Her dad, adorable. The mom, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. She can bite it. Probably um, that's... I would say Violet's mom was, like, the least likable character in the show. Yeah. Uh, so then we have Lady Danbury hold it, hosting the first ball of the season. The king and queen come. They dance together. We get a line from Violet's dad to Lady Danbury, which is where I immediately went, don't do it. Don't do it. it where he's like, on... I think we need to become friends. And I was like... See, the thing is, the interaction starts off pure, because I thought it was going to, like, showcase how Lady Danbury kind of fell between two... The two generations of, of Lord Ledger and then Violet eventually Bridgerton. Yeah. And you could tell from the very beginning he was just more progressive than his wife about the whole... I know. When he said, I want to be friends, I was like hopeful that it's like, oh, I want to show and, you and your husband's support. I want to... Yes. And the reason why I assumed it was wholesome 100% was because of the way he acted in the home. 
But because of the way he the way he looked at her and held her he, fucking oh, hand. Oh, he gave her the fuck me eyes. Yeah, it's just like, mm, mm, I don't trust you. I don't I don't trust what you're doing. Um And something else I really liked about this show as we like kind of head into to the end here. Um the show does a really, really great job of showing the terror, especially for, for both parties, but especially for the woman in these kind of marriages where, like, even somebody like Daphne, who married somebody in London, who's from England, who her brother has known for years, she still gets married and that night has to leave the only home she has ever lived in and accept it's like this home in London and her her home... Audrey House, are the only ones she's ever lived in and go to a house she has never been to in an area of the country she has never been to where the only person she knows is her husband. And if your husband just, like, dips out on you, it's, like, really fucked up. And, like, all I could think of is, like, with how the men in Bridgerton specifically talk about marriage where they're like, well, I'll get married and I'm gonna just, like, dump my wife in my house and then go do whatever, that it's kind of as cruel as if you were to like beat them because you're leaving them completely alone they have no one if if i i mean assu- we could assume that lord danbury wasn't the type to just dump lady danbury in another house that's probably why she's so nice to him is like that is the only thing you have in this world right now and then eventually yeah. you just have to lose yourself and your kids Because, like, Charlotte says it where, since Charlotte is from Germany, she had to leave her language and the only family in her country and the only family she had ever known and all of this stuff at 17 and only knows George and then he dumped her. And, like, all of, yeah, it's just, like, that that's that's fucked up because you have no one, especially, and then Augusta, when her brother comes to visit when Charlotte's pregnant, Augusta is, like yo, I, how nice that he came after I got married, I never saw my family again. And it's like, shit, like shit. You truly, these women are left oh, completely isolated and alone. And they go into how hard it was to make female friendships back then, especially if you were, not that I love things being like, look how hard the rich people have it, but like, you can't have those close friendships because everybody does have ulterior motives. And it like gets into that thing where you're like, Huh, maybe I do want to be poor because then I can fuck whoever I want and have real meaningful friendships and relationships with other see, people. <laughs> I, I thought we were going to see Charlotte have a little side boo, maybe in a painter, maybe in a footman. <laughs> Good Not lord. Gonna Not going to lie. Can Please. I ask, is that who you thought Brimsley was going to fuck? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> I was just curious. Um, I'm going to be honest. I, I probably assumed he was going to fuck Lady Danbury's lady maid. Handmaid. Hand lady. What do you uh, call it? Uh, ladies maid. Ladies maid. Boom. Coral was her name. Um, Coral! But yeah, uh, then George kind of grows a pair for a second. He finds out the child's pregnant, kind of grows a pair, fires the doctor. Little One pair. thing. Little pair. Like, all Tiniest. Size. One thing goes wrong, and he's like, never mind. <laughs> Beat me. Never mind. Um, and... Oh, God. Oh, God. He, and then he gives this doctor this whole monologue that he, at the end he keeps going, do you understand what I'm saying, doctor? I was like, George, I don't understand what you're saying. I don't think the doctor has a fucking clue what the you just said. The doctor doesn't know what you're saying. He just goes, oh, I have a pass to beat this boy. Yeah. Um. We see George's first, like, real uh, breakdown, which happens after he finds out that Charlotte is pregnant. This is what I'm calling minor. I would like to say I feel like they handled it perfectly fine and he didn't need to turn back to the torture doctor. Um, she went out there, she did what you gotta do in those situations where you're just really nice and you agree with them and like, and she was like oh, but I'm she was Venus. like, I'm Venus. Oh, oh. it ruined me. <laughs> oh, I'm Venus. Oh my God. Um, then, uh, in the present, we get Charlotte just marrying off two of her sons with the energy of, you took too long, so I did it. <laughs> my biggest fear. Truly. Um. Her sons try to, like, not make it go through, try to get their brother to put his foot down. Loved that moment as well, of her them being like, Mother, you forgot that the king gets full say over who the royal family marries. And she yeah. was like, 
of course, I overstepped. And then looks her son in the eye, because to any mom, you are my son first and the king of England second. He goes, be a good boy and approve your brother's marriages. And he goes, yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, let the man Lady grieve. Danbury. Let the man. I don't give a shit. Um, Lady Danbury, uh, her husband is dead, so she's taking walks, ends up on the Ledger's property. Her and, and Lord Ledger start to Shed have a moment. blossom in something. Yeah. Um. Ah. And sorry, I wrote in all caps: "Be a man, not a mouse." Reynolds. <laughs> this is what it was. One of the times George is screaming torture, and Reynolds like looks like he wants to go into the room, but is afraid to go into the room. And I just wrote like a million times: "Be a man, not a mouse." Yeah. Which I don't even know what that's from. <laughs> that like I Neither pulled I. that out was referencing it. Um. And, yeah, they, so finally, Queen Charlotte's like, I'm laying down the law here, friends and fam. The doctor is fired. I am taking George. Fuck all y'all. <laughs> um, we get this really great moment of George laying under the bed uh, and Charlotte joining him, him saying that he hides from the sky under there. They have a very sweet moment where she's basically like, I'm here to support you. Um, we are man and wife let's not have odd and even days where they've only been fucking on their even days and not and spending time apart on odd days let's just have days which hurt my soul so cute uh we get more of violently danbury talking about violent sex life and i just wrote if anthony heard any of this his head would pop off but honestly say <laughs> um and then we get into the biggest debate of the show which is should lady danbury tell violet that years ago she fucked her dad you know what I still don't know what the answer should be to that question. Neither do I. And I feel like where we left it is fine. And it's like I said to you, where if it gets referenced in the next few seasons, I will understand that Violet's like a little upset about it. Um, if it never gets referenced, I'm okay just being like they saw each other as women and that it was a moment. And like they have had conversations about how different their married lives were and how different their relationships with their children are. Yeah. Um, and I, think, I like that. I like that respect yeah. I, of I'm, each other. I feel like the biggest thing for it from Violet isn't that it was Lady Danbury. It was that... It was her more, father cheated on her mom at yeah. all. Um, and then, of course, she's wondering, well, if he did it this once, how many other times did he do it? And, like I said to you, something that I don't know if they would have back then, but I would have and I had in this moment of... You're not that much older than me. Like, you're older than me, but not by years... Like, it would be different if he, he had sex with a widow that was, like, 30-something, but... Ben Franklin would agree. Why doesn't he look at me, look at you and see his daughter? Yeah. Um, and that's a, that's a betrayal. Girls who find out their dads fucked somebody close to their ages, that is a p betrayal that, like, Godspeed, and I hope you get some good therapy. <laughs> um... Oh. <laughs> oh, we also get Charlotte giving birth, George wanting to be in there, and them all being like, this is woman's work. And it's like, then why is there a man elbow deep in a vag if it's yeah. a woman's work? And then And why George is half of turns... parliament outside the door? That was like a thing. Like, you would all stand. That's <clears throat> where the, like, smoking cigar. Sorry, I'm getting over a cold. And that man sitting outside the door, it all comes from this. Because this, like, the man would have, like, a party while his wife possibly died in the next room. Like, it's wild. Ugh. Um, And I like that when he finds out he can't be in the room, and then you hear her, Charlotte screaming, George just goes, Reynolds! As if Reynolds is, like, what the fuck do you want me to do? Yeah, like, I, what am I supposed to do? And I liked him just looking at the bishop and being like, do you like being the bishop? Because I'm, I'm the head <laughs> of the church. Do you like, do you like your job? Would you like to keep your job? Um, because trust me, I can get rid of you real quick. Henry VIII gave me some power you may not like. <laughs> um, and... Thanks, Grandpa Henry. You a real one. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, and then we get a really great moment between Agatha and Augusta where Agatha just bursts into tears over the weight of just, like, everything. And Augusta's like... No? What are we doing? No. <laughs> I I liked the idea of them together. I'm not gonna lie. They seemed like they'd be a No, it was great. Fit. Them playing like 
but I understand why she was no, like, not Adolphus, Augusta, Augusta, oh. the mom. Oh, my yeah. Bad. Oh, uh, yeah. Adolphus, like, he's just an annoying guy. And I loved Lady Danbury's, um, my entire life I've been taught to breathe for someone else. I don't know. I don't know how to breathe if it's not air he exhaled was, like, one of my favorite parts of the show. Like, yeah. her whole growth and watching her become that bitch was, like, and her with her son. Like, oh, when she bends over and she was, like, never let anybody tell you that you're not Lord Danbury because you are my son and it is what is your God-given right. I don't believe that dukedoms are God-given rights and fuck monarchies. But, like, yeah, you tell him. <laughs> you use the dumb laws of the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, yeah, then just going in the last episode, they have a ball um, to announce the naming of their first child. Um, we get a beautiful, beautiful strings rendition of I Will Always Love okay. You as... So this is the thing I wanted to talk about. I I'm Will ready. Always Love You is a musically beautiful song. But, beautiful song. But people play it thinking it's a love song and the lyrics are so not. Like it's such a bittersweet song because it's about the... One- bittersweet memories that is all I'm taking with me. Yeah. <laughs> And for them to finally get, not just them, but like for something to finally use this song the right way. Oh, Oh, God. The the bodyguard it originated from, like, used it the right way. Well, yeah. Since the bodyguard. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Oh, I love that song. I love that song. I've been listening to it. My heart. It started playing. I knew it was coming too. Because, like I said to you, I had listened to the album. I hadn't listened to that song because I knew it was going to make me cry. And it started playing, and I was like, oh, no, oh, no, no. Um, and they have this this beautiful ball um, where they were kind of both able to stand up on their own two feet. Um, everything's kind of come together. They find out that Charlotte is pregnant again. They are madly in love. Uh, we caught back to the present. Uh, Charlotte wakes up from something. Something wakes her up, and she asks Brimsley, oh, yeah, no, she asked Brimsley if he's still alive. She just wants to be sure. Um, we cut back to them dancing a little bit, and we pull away from the dance floor into the woods surrounding the dance floor to see Rem- Reynolds and Brimsley sharing a dance uh, in secret, far away, that's just for them. And then we see Brimsley dancing alone, at which point I googled, what happened to Reynolds? <laughs> uh, here's the thing. That footman walked down the stairs, and I was like, please tell me that's old Reynolds. Oh, that's please. Reynolds. He's coming down. He's going to dance. And he's going to do a little joke. And uh, I told Jordan this, and I'm going to tell our listeners, too. I looked it up, and the actor who played Brimsley said that there was a scene about how just the weight of a relationship that could have you hanged, that could ruin your whole life, ruin your family's reputation, was just too much, and they grew apart, and the the relationship just didn't really stand a chance and that there was a scene where you saw that and i was like thank god it wasn't in there i would not have been able to hold it together See, even if they did a scene that didn't like imply that or explain that it just kind of says they're not together in that way anymore i kind of just wanted one to be like is reynolds still alive yeah like that was kind and of my it, question and i get it where um This was another relationship you kind of knew was doomed from the beginning because just in the times being gay was not allowed. Like, it wasn't. And, like, they've established in Bridgerton that being gay is not, like, a thing. Like, um... Benedict finds out it's an option. Yeah, but watching Benedict discover homosexuality is one of the best parts of the first season. Um... Oh, it hurts my soul. And then, uh... We see Charlotte wanting in the present, saying she wants to go see George, tells Brimsley to stay behind, that she doesn't need protection to go see her own husband. We see George and Charlotte in the present day, where George is once again drawing uh, images of the heavens and the trajectory of Venus on the wall. And she's trying to tell him that they're, one of their sons and his wife are pregnant and that the line is going to live on. He won't listen. So she gets down on the floor under the bed and tells George to come... Uh, <laughs> hide from the heavens and they have this amazing moment under the bed of clarity when he went how funny to have run into you here i literally like i had to get up and move i had to like walk take a lap and her still calling him farmer george and then the camera farmer tra- george and venus and then the camera transition of like old her but then With young, it's young george and then young like him. She's, oh. he, she's still seeing that george oh, oh. Oh, oh, it's God. so, it's so brutal. It is, 
end of the notebook brutal to watch. It's wild. And then this happens earlier, but like we get like another love is a choice monologue from her talking to her son when he's like, she thinks he's going to run out on the wedding. Like in the moment he goes, I'm just scared. And she goes, you just need to make the choice to do it. And like, it's like her whole thing of like, when he's like, I don't want to fight with you. And she's like, fight with me, fight for me like that. You have to choose that. This is something you are going to do. And I think it's correct that it maybe not love is a choice and that you get to choose who you fall in love with, but maintaining a healthy long-term relationship is that you choose every day to approach things with love and caring and that you do love that person and like oh it hurts my heart it, that monologue to her son hurt me as badly as the love is a choice scene in the first season of Bridgerton destroyed me <laughs> and this one just like made it worse it was oh man it ruined me oh god Queen Charlotte was great that's me and Jordan's eclectic <laughs> thoughts on it as Jordan cries on content for the first time <laughs> Uh, it was it's very emotional uh, yeah um, i'm surprised this is my first time crying on content not gonna lie i'm well because didn't we lose the no way home podcast no i, I think no way home i was like oh no we lost the, the my predictions to no way home yeah i i think no way home i was just too high off the i was right bitches energy yeah to <laughs> so cry I said, yeah, um, too high to cry But thanks so much for joining us on this Tea Time. Um, Whenever they announce that Bridgerton Season 3 is coming out, we will recap Season 2. I need it. Okay, I'm going through a lot of I need it because I need to see it. And I understand why they're moving Colin and Penelope up. Because they cannot hint at it for another. I get it. However, I'm a little salty that it's not Benedict and Sophie. Because I love Benedict and Sophie. I would have been perfectly fine with them hinting at it for another season. I don't. And getting Benedict. Because I I also think you're really going to like Sophie. Um, Here's the thing. I say I seem to like everyone in Bridgerton. Again, we'll we'll go into the details when it's finally announced. We'll recap it season two. But Leanne will tell you, the Sharma sisters had an effect on me. I can't. I can't. There have been rumors about who's going to get cast as as Sophie, and I need like their ooh. It is a gambit of just me. stunningly attractive me. women. I want it to be um, a surprise. It's great. It's ooh. I'm ready. I'm ready to move. Um. But thanks so much for joining us. Uh, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, all the social media at Shared Screens. Um, if you're looking for regular comic, video game, movie, everything else content, you can check out our main channel. We have a bunch of stuff there. If you're interested in D&D, keep watching us because we have a new project call- coming out called New Rollers, where Jordan and I will be taking a deep dive into D&D from the beginning, leading up to a full campaign. If you want to watch our live stream, the VOD is on our YouTube, where we create our characters with Alec. Um... Other than that, bye!